Does this work? I hope so. Things are gonna be a little different today. What is up? Welcome back. I kinda wanna stand. Oh, I have an idea. What's up? Welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Henry. This is my workshop and on Wednesdays we talk about the things I've learned, the mistakes I've made so that you don't have to out in the real world. Whew. Today, we're talking about Wi-Fi. More specifically, I am sick and tired of being used and abused by big corporations. We don't know what plans we're paying for. We don't know what the specs of those plans are. The customer service sucks. And if you want to fix anything, you got to go into an endless phone loophole to try and get a hold of anybody. So I took it upon myself this week to figure out what the heck is happening between the time a signal is beamed from space into a receiving dish all the way to your house for your computer, your gaming consoles, whatever you use your Wi-Fi for, that's what we're figuring out today. I've got a good friend. Just kidding. Oh, there he is. We're getting to the bottom of Wi-Fi today. I'm getting Wi-Fi today. Let's do it. Tony? Hey Tony, Henry here. Ooh. Not the main one. Wait, so you're already in the main door? I think I know where you're at. Are you on the third floor? Maybe I don't. Can you just come to 348? Do you know where it is? Wait, wait, I hear you. Oh! Tony! What's going on? Fantastic. So, okay. You see these like, wood, like, you know, like, you see this shit? Oh yeah. Right all the cables for all the units go through inside these little wood uh, frame things along the side of the wall. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hey, wanna keep filming? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, and then they all came into like this, you know, 66 block. So like these are like phone blocks that like, you know, once upon a time, and kind of now, but a whole lot less now, um, like all the phone lines would get like, you know, patched in here. Oh my word. So, yeah, okay, keep going. Okay, so, the guy that had a company before me has the switch in here and has like all the, most, I would say 80% of the units like marked. You know? Okay. And they're mostly in this order. So then I just found wire 16 or whatever, which is 348 on it, and I gotta hunt it down. And I gotta make some adjustments to it. Because the way this was wired before, you know how we have gigabit networking now? Yes. Okay, well, we didn't always have gigabit networking. So the whole reason this is so set up like this is because that guy would send phone service and ethernet through the same wire. Okay. Because you only, in the past, you only needed two, um, Pairs, you only needed four wires to make your computer work. Okay. But now you actually need all eight for okay. gigabit service. So I gotta, you know, get this crap out of here and I gotta find your cable and I gotta cut it out and I'll show you in a second. What on earth? What Tony was just telling me was he doesn't necessarily know a lot, but what he does know is the fundamentals. That's what we've talked about before. It's just like knowing the principles of how things work and then you can fix anything, right? Pretty much. This is the old phone room? Yeah. So I was going to trade sides here, I get yeah, close yeah. or whatever, but this is my stuff inside of this, you know, rack in here, and that's the main router coming into this whole building. But if we ignore this, and if we look at this side, um, these are all, all the old phone lines that go between the different floors. And so AT&T would come right up here, they would find their dial tone, or whatever, yeah, dial tone then, now DSL line, whatever it is, right? And then they would use these little cross-connect cables, and they would, these are called house pairs. 
These are the ones that run inside the house or this building. So then they find an available house pair and then they go up to the unit or whatever it is and they attach into the house pairs. That's um, cool. This is, even though it looks messy, it's actually very simple. All these here cables are actually just two wires twisted next mm -hmm. to each other and just imagine them as a red and a black. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you just have your basic, you know, nine volt battery little circuit, very similar to that. And so it'd be nice if I could find more people that knew how that works because every so often I have to do cross connects, which is what this is. Like when you come here and you find one side and you go and you find the other side mm -hmm. and you cross connect them, and those kids are becoming scarcer and scarcer. I bet. Or, or, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Kids these days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sweet. So we're going from the roof to your uh, ladder here. Yep, yeah, here, and then from here to up the, the third, third floor. floor. Yeah, where and there's another switch, and then to, to your ladder. Let's do it. What are you looking for exactly? I know where the ether is. Yeah, where is it? That's what you're looking for? Yeah. It's in here. It's in the music box, and I you cut out a hole for it. In the music box? I mean, it can uh, move. I don't know if we have a choice. It can move, I'm telling you. It can move. You it's in here. If you like it here, uh, oh, it's in there. go for a walk. It's in there. Here, I have a flashlight. You see wow. it? I knew it would come in handy. Did I, did I mess it up? It's okay, it's not your fault. I messed it up. Hmm. Is that the only one in here? Yeah. Um, Does that mean the router has to live in here? Unless you want to sneak a cable like along the side and plug it in here. Um, here's the other deal. Let's go back outside actually. Okay. Look, if I wasn't clear, Tony is going to get me faster internet at a cheaper price with awesome customer service. I know this guy. I know where he lives. I don't know where he lives. But the fact that Tony knows who I am he knows how these systems work. He knows how the Wi-Fi in this building works, how he set it up. That is the crux of getting to the root of internet problems. I'm very excited to learn how this stuff really works. What, what happens? You said in Oak Park you can get a thousand megabits down and two hundred up. Yeah, you're what on the changes, wrong side so of the building. When we go to the other side of the building, I'll point it actually through the window. What changes? Um, the air. Okay. You know, so it's I, a distance. I to, yeah, I have to take those internet packages and sling them. You know, we say slinging bits yeah. in the yeah. industry. Okay, I gotta take this and I got and I gotta smash it through the air and I gotta push it to get here. But on its way here. It, Loses. You know, it, yeah, it loses because uh, the air absorbs our, you know, the air absorbs RF, also the water molecules in the air. And um, so by the time it gets here, we're at something like 80 down and 80 megabits up. At least that's what you were getting. Yeah, and it also, I mean, the, the radios claim that they're running at around 200, but the radios like to, you know, like make music people, radio. Um, ah, radio. Ah, that's a very good question and point. Um, in a sense, yes. Okay, you have a radio in your car, right? Or let's go back a little bit more old school when you had like a boombox radio, right? With a little dial on it and you uh -huh. could tune different uh, radio stations, okay? So those little different radio stations are different frequencies, okay? And the antenna on the other side is broadcasting like an FM station, right? They're putting out there the music. And now let's you know make an analogy of the music being the internet. Okay, so I'm pushing or the, you know the internet out from over there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and on this side I have to get my little radio. I have to tune it to that same frequency that's over there. Right. Well, that's why I asked you when we were first on the phone. I was like, is this microwaves? Like, what the heck is going on here? What yeah, is microwaves though. See, the thing is that like, so you, when you because there's I that phones. chart that you've seen. Okay, with yeah, that, that of long course. Still, yeah. Okay, yeah. and then it says that visible light is you know somewhere down there. Microwave classification doesn't start until a little bit further down the chart. Okay, I don't know where that cutoff is. I think it's around the 10 gigahertz mark. Okay. I think. So okay. is this radio? I mean, look, definitely they're all really microwaves, right? But it's like at what point of the frequency right. band that they're in. Right. You know? Um, Infrared. I guess, yeah. So, so we have, right, we have VHF, you know, I mean, there's, you know, we have high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, UHF, okay? And then I don't really know how it kind of goes after that. Yeah. But 
I mean, the, the internet radio spectrum, okay, is almost up to 100 gigahertz now that people use. Um, the lowest in a sense that people use are like 450 megahertz, okay? And then the most common one that everybody uses is 2.4 gigahertz, which is what your microwave yeah. oven is, which is the 2.4 G on your router, yeah. okay? Which is also where the water molecules in your body, they resonate, like, which is why the, your microwave pumps out 2.4 gigahertz to inside. heat up the water, <laughs> okay? And resonate is pretty much like where they're harmonized. And you understand yeah. harmonics and music, yeah. Okay, so it's the same thing. The harmonics make that work. And then they start dancing, vibrating. Strip it, you separate all the strands, okay? You pull back a little bit on the jacket, you know, back here, so you got yeah, a little yeah. bit to work with, okay? You straighten them all out. Then if you notice, they're actually kind of already in order, okay? We start off with the orange, so white, orange, orange, white, green, and then we got the blues. So blue, white, blue, and then we got the remaining solid green, then white, brown, brown. See how they all were just kind of yeah, in yeah. order and they just fell into their order? Like I didn't have to, you know, pull one over the other one. And then what you do is you straighten them out like this. You make them like really straight, okay? See, like that, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And you take your, this is my favorite tool at least. All right, cut them. Eventually, over time, you'll figure out what the proper length is. You get a connector. And, and sliding can the connector buy one on. of these at the store? Or no? Yeah, but at the store, you're gonna pay, you know, $20 for it. And you're making When it you have the tools, exactly. These connectors are $20 for a bag of 100. Yeah. Um, and the wire, and the wire is, wire. you can get cheap wire, which is actually what I use. And the cheap wire is $45 for 1,000 feet. Does that give you worse in a sense, yes, but you wanna know what? There's also a reality standpoint, okay? Right. And the reality is that CCA wire is pretty much equally as good as regular copper wire for ethernet. Someday this video will appear on YouTube and somebody will quote me on this. <laughs> okay, we're about to boot it up. We have picked up a Wi-Fi signal from the roof of this building, Tony's receiving dish, transceive, I don't know what it's called. It has made its way down to the phone room of the building where all, we saw all kinds of switches happen to get different things to different rooms. And now we're here, we found the wire, we pulled it out of the wall. Tony has made a network cable to go right into the router. This is the moment of truth. And then we're figuring out how did those Wi-Fi signals even get to this building in the first place? They're coming from space and we need to go directly that's a different building. It's a 19 story tall, 19 story building where Tony's original receiving dish is. That's where we're going next. It's gonna be a field trip. Where's the oil I should watch out for? Oh, that's up in that oh. room up there. Yeah. Okay, this here is where our story ends and the Wi-Fi begins with Mr. Tony. Howdy. Um, Tony, first of all, where is your dish? All oh, that stuff up there. They're all <laughs> yours? Um, oh, so you like tap into so, this whole um, thing? They all go different places. Okay. Um, these all go to different places. So these go to the tallest building in Oak Brook, which you can see down there. Maybe you can see it down okay. there. Okay. So uh, if we put our hand in front of oh it, yeah, that would like, okay. that would stop them? Uh, all of Oak Brook. Uh, it wouldn't. I mean, it's big enough to where that wouldn't. It wouldn't, it wouldn't and ruin its day. And where's the one that goes to my building? It's obviously pointed. Up. Wow, look at that view. Yeah. Okay. You see that hole right there where all those cables are going through? Yeah. Yeah, all those cables inside of there, I have my equipment rack. And then that, you know, there's a cable that's in there and it goes all the way down to the first floor where the fiber optic comes in. Oh, so you're getting internet here from the city? I'm getting internet from here from a company called Cogent. Cogent. Yeah, they deliver, like you've never heard of them. Like they sell internet to us, internet right. providers. So they're bringing it fiber underground and there's a little fiber handoff downstairs. And then it comes all the way up here. Okay. And from here, so I- So you, the internet provider, have an internet provider. Yes, we all have internet provider. We call it Peering. Okay. Are you recording this? Yes. Yes, great. We call it Peering. Peering. Okay. 
peer, P E E R, like your peers, like your friends. Okay. Like peering. Oh, you peering. Know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like, who are we connected to? Okay. You know. So some people are connected to Cogent and Hurricane Electric. Some people are connected to Hurricane Electric. There's maybe like four, like four or five like big companies. You know, like uh -huh. AT&T, GTT, NTT, uh, Cogent, and Hurricane Electric. I would think those are like the the nicer people. And so they're to be pumping in. To. They're pumping in fiber here. Yes. You're getting it and beaming it out. Exactly. Wow, that's From it. Here. But what's important to note is this stuff is all really expensive to set up and get started. And it's all about having a plan. Right, right. And, uh, you can't just go to Cogent and get internet. No, I mean, you do, you can, but you're gonna be locked into a one year deal and you're looking right. at like two grand a month, you know? Right. So you better have a good plan as to how you plan on selling all that internet. Right. Do and you, okay, so your antenna's going yes. that way. Yes. Can you, Help people over uh, there. That as well in Forest Park, of course. You can. Yes. In fact, I already have a handful of. Them. Actually, you might be able to see one of my antennas actually. So on you top have multiple of my antennas house. here, or no? Yeah. There's some antennas that point that way. Oh, some okay. That point this way. I don't got anybody going. Okay. okay. What is this? This is the elevator. Uh, That's the elevator. Yeah. This is what makes the elevator go up and down. It's cranking away. So, we're learning about elevators. So this is all the different providers. Uh, what is this Xfinity is all up here? Like, there's, look, there's only one other provider up here, and I used to work for this provider when I was a little kid. Then what are the rest of the dishes? This company. Tower I used to work Street. for this company when I was 21 years old, and my buddy Daryl was working there. I mean, and he said to me, "You know, you should really go to college." <laughs> he was right. <laughs> but um, oh well, here I am. Okay. And it's kind of interesting and it's kind of cool because here I am eight years later and I'm taught and I'm at the same building that they're at. Right. And I feel it's like a, like an achievement. Yeah. You know, Tony, I thought, I thought this stuff was coming from space. It's not. No, it's not. No, the SpaceX is actually coming from space, but that's not this. Okay. This, this stuff is wireless. all coming from fiber optics underground. Yep. And then they come underground up to that rack that you saw. Yes. And that rack, they all come up here. From here, here I sling it to whatever direction it's got to go in. My building gets it. It hits that phone room. Yep. You it comes down. It, and it comes oh, it's units. so good. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for wanting to learn a thing or two today about Wi-Fi and entrepreneurship. Tony's an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur, you're probably an entrepreneur. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know why. Give me a call, shoot me a text, my number's down below anytime, and I will see you Friday. Peace.